As we have discussed many times by now, the first member of every P block enjoys a kind of special attention and our oxygen is no different. Compared to the rest of the group 16 elements, oxygen differs in certain behaviors. In this video, we will look at a few things. We will look at the multiple oxidation states exhibited by oxygen. Secondly, we will look at the physical properties of oxygen and compare them with that of sulfur. And thirdly, we will see how the absence of d orbitals affects the chemistry of oxygen. And lastly, and more importantly, we will look at a unique property that oxygen has due to its small size and very high electronegativity. We know that oxygen is the second most electronegative element and because of that it tends to show mostly the negative oxidation states which in most cases is minus 2. For example, in sodium oxide, potassium oxide, H2O, water, carbon dioxide, in all of these you can see that the oxidation state exhibited by oxygen is minus 2. Now oxygen also exhibits minus 1 oxidation state in peroxides like sodium peroxide and potassium peroxide as you can see here. You must be surprised to see that oxygen also shows positive oxidation states like plus 1 and plus 2. So that means it must be combined with something or an element that is more electronegative than oxygen itself, right? And only then it would be positive, only then it would be willing to give away its electron to only a more electronegative element. And which element can be more electronegative than oxygen? Yes, fluorine, right? So when oxygen combines with fluorine, it attains a positive oxidation state as you can see in this case. In O2F2, it has a plus 1 oxidation state, whereas in OF2, it has a plus 2 oxidation state. In both of which you can see that it has combined with a more electronegative fluorine atom. So these are the only instances where oxygen shows a positive oxidation state. Now if you look at the physical properties like melting and boiling point, you will notice that there is a huge jump from oxygen to sulfur in both the cases. In general, we know that the melting point and boiling point increase as we go down the group with increase in the atomic size. That means we need to provide more energy to break the molecule or the attractive forces that hold them. Now when you compare oxygen and sulfur, how can we substantiate this drastic increase in their melting and boiling points? Well, that's where atomicity comes into play. Atomicity is nothing but the number of atoms that are present in the molecule of an element. For example, oxygen exists as a diatomic gas that contains two oxygen atoms in a single oxygen molecule. But sulfur is a polyatomic molecule which has eight sulfur atoms linked together. So that means to break the sulfur molecule we need to provide a lot more energy than what is required to break up the oxygen molecule. Exactly. Using atomicity, we can explain this large difference in the melting and boiling point between oxygen and sulfur. Another factor that affects the chemistry of oxygen is the absence of empty d orbitals. And just like in the case of boron and carbon and nitrogen, this unavailability of d orbitals restricts the covalency of oxygen to 4. You see, the electronic configuration of oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, right? That means the valence electrons are present in the second shell and there are no d orbitals present in this shell. Whereas the heavier members like sulfur or selenium, they all have empty d orbitals available like 3d, 4d, 5d and so on. So they can basically expand their octet beyond 4 by using these empty d orbitals. For example, sulfur can easily form SF6 by expanding its octet or by using the empty d orbitals. But when oxygen combines with fluorine, you will end up with something like OF2. You cannot expect something like OF6 as you observed in the case of SF6. Now even though we say that the maximum covalency of oxygen is restricted to 4, it practically never even exceeds 2, except probably when it forms hydronium ions H3O+, where you can see that there are two covalent bonds between oxygen and hydrogen and a coordinate covalent bond where it has donated its lone pair of electrons to a proton. So this is one of the instances where oxygen extends its covalence beyond 2. Let's now discuss the consequence of small size and high electronegativity of oxygen. Because of the small size and very high electronegativity of oxygen, 
it can actually form strong hydrogen bonds and this is what we observe in water because of the high electronegativity difference between hydrogen and oxygen these atoms acquire partial charges like hydrogen acquires partial positive charge and oxygen acquires partial negative charge and because oxygen also has the presence of two lone pair of electrons these can further coordinate with the hydrogen of another water molecule whereas if you compare it with h2s you can see that h2s is actually a gas unlike h2o which is a liquid this is because there is no such hydrogen bonding possible in h2s because of the larger atomic size of sulfur and lesser electronegativity as compared to oxygen so while the molecules of water associate with each other through strong hydrogen bonding no such association is possible in h2s which is why it is a gas now something similar existed in the case of nitrogen 2 if you recall nitrogen again is the smallest one in its family group 15 and has the highest electronegativity as compared to the rest of the family members and because of that nitrogen also had the unique ability to form hydrogen bonds but nitrogen forms weaker hydrogen bonds as compared to oxygen because of its larger size and lower electronegativity as compared to oxygen so to conclude what all did we learn in this video well we talked about the oxidation state of oxygen and the cases in which the electronegative oxygen can show positive oxidation states we also talked about atomicity of oxygen and how it affects the physical properties like melting point and boiling point we also saw how the absence of d orbitals restricts the covalency of oxygen to 4 and more importantly we discussed how oxygen has the ability to form strong hydrogen bonds something that is although not very unique to oxygen but is definitely of great importance